It's Nolan. Promises I've been waiting on. A lot of y'all been hating, but that's the way it go. People I used to run with trying to play me. No matter what they do, can't let them. Yeah, can't even start my day. Somebody feel away. Let's not assign some paperwork today. My life a chain. Can't even celebrate. This shit must come with older age. I'm about to reach for bigger heights. Somehow I feel afraid. Shut down my phone for some peace of mind. That you need some time for me and mine. See, like all I do is hit the street and grind. Dollar after dollar facing scrutiny. Need you got this LLC. This music shit ain't what it used to be. I thought it was a dream. Had a vision for my team. Wrote a movie picture perfect. Now they got me cutting scenes. Plus my girl, she won't arrive. Ring. I can lie, man, she deserve it from the lions to the lamb. She held me down while facing surface. It get deeper than the surface. Down the stress, been wearing deep. Gotta switch up all my sheet, cause I've been sweating in my sleep. Know the karma gon' be sweet. Reading comments, clear my conscience to the beast. They say I'm so on what I read, so now them commas come in peace. Hey, lot of broken promises I've been waiting yeah. on. Lot of y'all been hating, but that's the way it go. People I used to run with trying to play me. No matter what they do, can't let them change me, no A lot of broken promises I've been waiting on A lot of y'all been hating, but that's the way it go People, uh, yeah What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Hope everybody is doing well. I want to give a quick shout out to all of the artists that sent their music in yesterday to be a part of the uh, live music review. Even if we did not enjoy your music, I greatly appreciate you actually taking the time to email me, send me your material, allow us to sit back, listen to it, dissect it, and give our feedback because I know it takes a lot out of you as an independent artist i am an independent artist myself i have submitted my music to other shows i've gotten great feedback i've gotten good feedback and i've gotten negative feedback from other commentators and people that do these types of things so i want y'all to understand i fully understand where you're coming from and it's still all love nothing but love and respect from jay nolan and the inside the industry crew the insiders just want to let y'all know you know what i'm saying but i definitely appreciate those of y'all that tuned in enjoyed the show and had a good time with us because we definitely had a motherfucking good time a time was had all right now today we about to get into this whole elliot wilson Charlemagne the god issue that's going on right now some of y'all may not be clued into what i'm talking about especially if you don't spend a good enough time amount excuse me a time amount of time <laughs> stumbling on twitter if you don't spend that much time on twitter then you probably have not seen you know this back and forth exchange that's going on with these two if you don't tune into the brilliant idiots podcast if you're not following elliot wilson on twitter if you don't tune into the bigger picture with elliot wilson dj head and what's what's the other guy's name jeremy hecht yeah jeremy hecht if you haven't been clued in on none of these shows or, you know, I mean, these conversations that are happening, then you're probably way out the loop. And we're going to kind of go over the chronology of this dispute that they've been having back and forth in this video. So I'm going to catch y'all up to speed on what's been going on, how things transpired. And to be honest, all of this is kind of coming to a head because of the complex media power rankings list. Um, I actually avoided speaking about this list um, when it came out because it originally dropped on July 11th. And the reason I, I, I skipped out on this was I wasn't sure if my viewers would actually give a fuck about this list. You know what I'm saying? But it seems now that the list is out, everybody's had a chance to marinate, sit on their thoughts uh, the people on the list came out and some of them have reacted to their positioning. They've reacted to others positioning in the list, which I think is interesting to say the least. Now, all of a sudden, the last week or so, we've had this ongoing back and forth with Charlemagne and Elliot. So these are the two that are taking it the most offensive about where they land on the list and whether or not either or should even be credited as being on the 2024 hip hop media power rankings right now, of course me as a, you know, I guess what some would say like an upstart YouTube streamer commentator, I've got 13.5 thousand subscribers. I'm not in that stratosphere where I would be considered for the list. Some people would be like, man, what the hell are you talking about? Why are you even on this? You know what I mean? 
I don't really pay attention to this list, but again, it's created so much controversy, so much conversation. I figured why not speak about it on my channel, give my opinion, because who knows, a year or two from now, somebody like Complex might be throwing me in some conversations. You know what I'm saying? I would foresee it, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. So let's get into it without wasting too much time. We're gonna go. We're gonna go through the list, and then we're gonna get into the discourse that's happening, right? So they put out the top twenty-five people or media personalities, platforms, etc. Right. So at number twenty-five, we got Gabe P. If you don't know who Gabe P. is, I'm not surprised, but he is actually the. Uh, I guess you could say, I don't know if he's the CEO, if he's the sole proprietor, you know what I mean? I don't know what the deal is, but he created On The Radar. So when you see those people with that green background, the mic, and they come up there, do the freestyle, they debut new songs or whatever, Gabe P is the one that's behind that. He's shooting those, um, he's taking this, this, this platform all over the United States to different states and giving different artist platforms, et cetera. So he's at number 25, which I think... If we're just talking about hip hop media, period, as in platforms, as in personalities, as in um, places for artists to go. Personally, I think he should be a lot higher than 25, but that's just me. Maybe they're doing this based on not only impact, but also um, tenure in the game, I guess. But whatever. So at number 24, we got Arshan Jaweed. From Kids Take Over, honestly, I'm not familiar, right? So we're going to keep going. If y'all know who that is, great. Number 23, we got Jason Lee, surprisingly. I didn't expect him to be on here either, to be honest. I know he has a big platform with Hollywood Unlocked. I think he's definitely earned it. I just wasn't expecting it. But y'all know who Jason Lee is, all right? Cool. Number 22, Adam 22. I, th I think y'all chose that for serendipity purposes. I think y'all was being funny. Y'all know who Adam is. Number 21, Van Lathan. Number 20, Trap Laura Ross. If you don't know who Trap Laura Ross is, he's kind of like a true crime documentarian, but he also delves into the criminology of hip hop and some of the some of the artists in their uh, criminal backgrounds and stuff like that. Number 20. I think he could, him and Gabe could have been interchangeable at 25 and 20. To be honest, I don't really see Trap Laura you know, whatever. Number 19, Nadeska Alexis. Y'all know who Nadeska is, you know, and she's got her own show, The Nadeska Show. She's also on the Rap Life Review with Ebro and Low Key. I don't know, you know, they're on Beats Radio and stuff like that, but I really don't know how many people really tune into that show. You got to be a real Ebro, Nadeska, Low Key fan to like tune into that show on the regular, you know what I mean? Especially for it to be on like Apple. They don't really get that much coverage, but or views, to be honest. But, you know, salute to them. I like Nadeska. She's been around for a very long time. She's been working in hip-hop media for a very long time. I remember when she was on Rap Fix with Sway. She went on to do other things with Complex and all these other places. She's earned her spot. But I don't know about, you know, I'll give her credit for the Nadeska show, for still being around. You know what I mean? Cool. Number 18, Sway. I think Sway definitely deserves to be a lot higher. But based on 2024 metrics... His platform has, you know, dwindled in, in, if you check the numbers on YouTube, sometimes Sway videos get the same amount of views as mine. I don't know why I'd still tune into Sway. I still watch him. I still watch his freestyles. I still watch interviews he does with people, but for whatever reason, he's just not getting the same, that same push, but he don't be tripping about it, which is what I love about Sway. He don't, he don't get swayed, <laughs> pun intended. Right or left, based on what people are talking about, what they saying, how they rank him. Nobody questions his legend status. You know what I'm saying? When it came time to interview Barack Obama in the office, who they invite? Sway ain't even take that motherfucking hat off. Shout out to him. Number 17, Angela Yee. Now I find this one interesting. Much love and respect to Angela Yee. I give Angela a lot more credit than most people do. But her new show, Way Up With Angela Yee, it's been off to a rough start. It hasn't really impacted the culture that much. If we're going to keep it all the way honest, uh, maybe some people out in, you know, I think it is already syndicated off the rip. So if you tune into that show and you enjoy it, kudos to you. But as an interviewer, as somebody who used to do 
the majority of the research on the breakfast club she held down a lot of interviews she kept a lot of things at bay when Charlemagne was flying off the handle and disrespecting people she would at least be the one person in the room that was knowledgeable about the artist or the guest i give her respect off of that and she's been around for a long time she's still here which is not an easy thing to do number 16 big boy shout out to big boy in the neighborhood Number 15, Angie Martinez. She's probably one of my favorites of all time. Again, somebody who's very secure in her position in what she does. She does her interviews. She does her shows. She gets her money. And she don't really she don't really be tripping about nothing. Very respectful. You know what I'm saying? To this day, she never let out that, that Tupac interview that would have basically created World War III back in 96. So you got to give her the love and respect, right? Number 14, Bootleg Kev. I tune into Bootleg Kev. I like his show. He's another one of those underrated where he's been in the industry for a very long time. He's done the mainstream shows and stuff like that. He works with DJ Head, or at least he used to. Um, he's good, but he doesn't get like crazy views either other than like really major interviews that he gets from time to time, which I find to be very interesting where some of these bigger media personnel out here, personalities, when I look at their shows and when I look at their views, I'd be like, dang, they really, they kind of getting like four, five, six thousand views. Excuse me. I would think they would have more. Number 13, Rory and Maul. Okay, so they made the list this year. Shout out to Rory and Maul. We know them, of course. Number 12, Lil Yachty and Mitch. You know, they got the Safe Space podcast and Say what you want about Lil Yachty. I'm not a fan of his music. I don't listen to him. He makes some very questionable uh, comments in the hip hop space, saying that hip hop is in a very terrible place when he's out here putting <laughs> questionable music out. But outside of that, if you look at their actual podcast and the, the people that they've had on the show, they've been out here making an impact. So I give him that. All right. Number 11, Nori. I don't know why y'all put Nori and not drink champs because Nori himself, I don't feel like he's a power rank. I think if you want to put drink champs up here, why would y'all, why would y'all exclude DJ EFN? He's a, he's a vital part of the show. Even though Nori is the A mic, he's the B mic. You don't really have one without the other. And he tries to provide some sort of balance on that show when Nori is typically interrupting the guests, giving them shots and talking too goddamn much. But salute to Nori. I grew up bumping your music. So I always got respect for you. Number 10, Narwar. You know, I don't know. I don't know where Narwar been at. He ain't, he don't really produce at a, at a high clip. But he got some stuff out there that's out here that kind of flies under the radar. The amount of research that he puts into his work alone puts him in the list. I got to be honest. I think he could have been ranked way in the back though if i'm gonna be honest because i ain't seen his shit number nine gillian wallow you know me and i was worth a game you love him or you hate him they're in the conversation and over the course of the last year or two artists have been skipping a lot of the other shows the younger artists and they're going to million dollars worth a game they're telling a life story they're giving you the background they're giving you music takes we got goddamn metro booming on there making beats for, for gilly to rap on the whole nine so I've I've been watching their show less lately, but I still understand their impact. Number eight, Anthony Fontano from the Needle Drop. How the fuck is he at number eight? He's been around for a long time doing album reviews and shit like that. Half his content ain't even hip hop related. Um, and most of his takes are straight ass. You know, he could have been in the 20s if you're going to put him in there because there's only so many major names and when i say major i'm not talking about with major backing or from a publication or a, a corporation but just as far as like figures that have been here for you know decade or close to it you put them in there you're put, you're basically putting them in there out of respect for that he was ranked number 13 last year he's ranked number eight this year he has not grown for him to go up five spots let's be honest about this shit number seven ebro that's cap but much love and respect to Ebro. I respect Ebro, but top 10 and the desk is in the back. They should have been, you know, wherever Nadeska was, Ebro should have been a rung above it because they on the same fucking show. Number six, DJ Vlad. We don't respect Vlad over here, although he does have, I mean, 
probably the most content dropping on a consistent basis out of most. Vlad is dropping daily, whether that be clips from the interview or the full interview. People still continue to go up to Vlad despite how people talk about him. So I guess he is one of those folks that you just can't count out. Number five, Elliot Wilson. Here's where we get into the real. Okay, last year he was ranked number eight. His presence in hip hop in today's media has definitely grown. So I give him the respect on that. Um, but clearly some peers don't feel the same. You know what I mean? And of course, he's been a journalist in hip hop since the early to mid 90s, being with the source, going on to do double XL, coming back and doing rap radar. Um, and he did Rat Radar for many years. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the current status of Rat Radar is. Seems like he's dedicating more time towards the bigger picture, uh, spending time on Twitter, going back and forth with artists. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of trying to find his space, find his footing in this new generation. Because even with the generation of when Rat Radar came out in the mid-2010s you know, to the 2024 margin, a lot has changed even in that span of time. And he's still finding himself... In the conversation, I think he's more so in the conversation now than he was back then off of that show. Like, B-Dot ain't as big of a public figure as Elliot, right? We got to be honest about that. Number four, Charlemagne the God. We know who that is. Number three, Kai Sanat. We know Kai. Number two, Joe Budden. That's, wow. He won last year, so I think they had to keep him in the top three, which I think he earns because every Joe Budden take goes viral. More so than some of the others. So I think he definitely deserves that spot. I think he probably could have got number one again if we're keeping it to these same selection of names. But number one, DJ Academics. And I think they're giving DJ Academics the number one spot due to the uh, value of his contribution. I hate to say it, you know what I mean? And most people would hate to say it, but he did contribute in the battle between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. He was a mouthpiece for Drake. He's continued to be one of the mouthpieces for Drake in uh, social media and YouTube and, you know, Rumble, wherever he's at streaming. So I think that earned him the number one spot is that he was such a vital piece in disseminating either information, breaking records, um, or just keeping people entertained during the height of the Kendrick Lamar and Drake battle. This guy was doing eight hour streams, talking about these guys back and forth, back and forth. And out of this new generation, he's kind of who a lot of people are looking at as the benchmark. There's a lot of creators out there that are stealing his ways, his speech patterns, his mannerisms, his everything. So you got to kind of put him in that space, even if you don't like him. And I know most people don't. You know what I mean? So that's the list. Now, we're going to get into the actual issue between Charlemagne and Elliot. We wanted to get I wanted to set the stage because I know a lot of people have not been keeping up with this. And it's my job as a commentator to not just give you all half baked content. We want to go through what really transpired, how it happened, why it happened. So you don't got to look nowhere else to get the additional context. OK, so there's that. Now, let's get into what Charlemagne had to say about Elliot being in that number five spot right next to him at number four. Yeah. I don't think you should be number five. Number four, Charlemagne the guy. All right, now let me read this, right? Last year's ranking number three featured on The Breakfast Club going on in certain parts of the culture. You know, that's what we're asking people like Complex to do. Do a little bit more networking. I don't <laughs> think y'all doing enough networking. You know what I mean? Okay. Not not because y'all, there's no way you should have missed hey. Our Nala Simone on the list this year. You know what I'm saying? I uh, had Elliot at number five. But scroll up the one line that they said. Cause this is this is really my issue with the list. Well, uh, he is a mainstay in rap media, even as he continues to broaden his scope and find new ways to transcend hip hop. This is part of the reason he dropped the slot this year. Didn't Biggie say I never thought hip hop would take it this far? Why are people being penalized? for being most sensible like van why why am i dropping a spot because i'm transcending hip-hop you should see me on cnn msnbc daily show my own late night talk show you should see me on the new york Times bestsellers list the usa today national bestsellers list you should see me with the black effect podcast you know and and, and we have all of these podcasts that we're partnered with you should see me and kevin hart's company uh, you know, SBH with Audible putting out all of these audio script, all this audio scripted content. You should see all of this and be like, damn, that's somebody from the culture. Oh, oh. No. 
Yo, <laughs> why the hell did Charlemagne make it about him? That's what I don't understand. So Elliot is number five. You're number four. You said he should not be number five. And instead of actually expounding on why you didn't believe he was number five, which I think would have been corny as well. Let's keep it a buck. Like y'all are counterparts in this hip hop media sphere. Why would you ever undermine one of your peers unless y'all really have an issue, right? You come out and publicly slander this man who never said shit about you. Not publicly, not to my knowledge. If if somebody knows where Elliot Wilson made some sideways comments about Charlemagne the God before this list came out, I would love to know. But I don't think that ever happened. I don't think that issue ever occurred. Why would you make it about yourself and start talking about how you're transcending hip hop? You've always transcended hip hop because the Breakfast Club was not exclusive to hip hop artists or hip hop coverage. Y'all bring pop stars up there if they're willing to come up there. Y'all bring movie stars up there if they're willing to come up there. Y'all get athletes up there if they're willing to come up there. Now, all of these different areas within the culture definitely fall into the hip hop uh, demographic. They fit into the hip hop worldview, right? They fit into hip hop entertainment in terms of those that may come from our culture and they go off and do other things, right? Because we got to be entertained. We have our own vantage point. We like to see ourselves represented in these different areas, but y'all were never just an exclusively hip hop show. We've never seen Charlemagne do anything exclusively for hip hop. When he goes on the daily show, or whatever the fuck that was, or he tries out for this show or that, or that show, or he goes on MTV and does his own thing. That has never been exclusively hip hop. So why do you feel slighted by them using that in relation to, to Elliot Wilson when your position was not in relation to Elliot Wilson whatsoever. I don't think that's smart. I don't think that's real. I don't think that's honorable. You've been around in this game for too long for you to be that insecure about your spot. That's weird to me. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of weird to me. So on the heels of Charlamagne making that comment, Elliot Wilson came out and just let it be known. This is some sucker shit. I didn't disagree with Elliot. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand that. I saw him post this tweet saying sucker shit at Charlemagne the God on Twitter. I didn't understand what was going on, but then I heard it. I saw it and I was like, eh, I'm not mad at that because he literally diverted the conversation and made it about him. Weird activity, right? So from there, sucker shit, he came back. And said, fuck you, Charlemagne, which at that point I thought it was a little excessive, but it's like shit. Hey, if, if the door is open, I guess everybody coming to the barnyard to get it popping today. You feel me? So <laughs> he said, fuck you. He then came back and said, I want all the smoke. He calls him a hall of fear. Excuse me. He then called him a hall of fame career. Third Mike nigga. Crying about my top five status. Legacy these nuts. I got great content on the way. Hashtag 2024. So those are words from Elliot Wilson. Direct quotes from Elliot Wilson via Twitter. So now at this point, y'all know we got it's beef. It's on. It's finna go back and forth. It's finna get digital. <sighs> and it certainly did. Okay. So from there, let's let's hear what uh, Charlemagne had to say on the heels of Elliot's response. Had great content on the way. Hashtag 2024. Why is it on the way? Why isn't it now? Yeah. Tell me what you've done over the past year that warrants you be number God, five. God. Wallow and Gilly constantly putting out fantastic content yeah. you know it, it, interviewing all of the young artists all of the young artists like i said last week want to go to wallow and gilly wallow and gilly be giving them that og game nori with drink champs constantly giving you so, great hip-hop content vlad tv constantly giving you great hip-hop content i don't think that you should be over any of those guys number five i don't think you should be over gay p like i said on the podcast last week gay p is somebody who comes out with a show you know, uh, on the radar, that is a rap show. It's literally about the best. The, the people go up there and freestyle. So let me just that understand. is rap. As an outsider uh -huh. to this, uh, can you be awarded a rap or hip hop media award if you don't have a platform? 
So that's the other thing. You don't even have a consistent platform, my But brother. does he have a platform? I don't know. He does, but he don't use it. Rap, it, it, Rap, Rap Radar, Radar was, I thought it was really good. When like the, the last time the, you've seen a Rap Radar interview? I remember the interview with, uh, was it Jay-Z? Where it was, no. It was five, that was nine years. I don't even, that was a long, 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 so long So they time stopped ago. doing Rap Radar? I haven't seen one in a long time. Great, okay. br- great brand. I know that they wanted, uh, when they lost their, well, they didn't lose their last deal. I think the company that they was with. Shut they, down. Shut down. Yeah. And then he wanted to come to Black Effect. Oh, no. We didn't want it. Oh, so that's that, why he's. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the reason why. You know what I'm saying? But we. we or it's more insult to injury when when you weren't interested and you also said he doesn't deserve a spot. Listen, man. Yeah. Well, they I, haven't, I, for what it's worth, they haven't. According to Apple, it hasn't released an episode since December 14th, 2023. Okay, so let and me. That under- might have been me. <laughs> I might have been the last episode. Uh, no, it's Gucci Man and. But I think it was, you know, intervals shut down towards the beginning of this year. So let me just okay, understand okay, okay. this. Is is your argument in order to get to be a figure in, in hip hop media, you need a platform to disseminate your media? I think so. I mean, everybody else up there has one. Like anybody you look at in multiple. the top 25 list, if you look academics at academics, has multiple academics platforms. has multiple platforms. Yeah. You have and, multiple. And, 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 and let, let's talk about that. Yeah. Right. People can say whatever they want about acting. I, I give them his props again. He consistently Now nah, he's involved. He's this involved. Guy, Act might be on stream right now. He's involved. Act might be on his ninth hour. He's like into me. <laughs> right now. Act might, we might, whatever time we're taping this, he might be on his ninth yeah, hour yeah. of a stream. And this might just be his first time jumping on today. And he's intimately involved yeah. in most of the beefs that are happening. He's like releasing it's, music. It's, yeah, come yeah. on, bro. He's yeah, got, yeah. He, daily, incredible. he's on the stream. Incredible. He's got the off the, on the record podcast. Same thing with Joe. Joe realize Joe's it, like, putting out two podcasts a week. It's a Nori's time, putting out a podcast yeah, a week. Yeah. Gillian Wallow putting out not just the podcast. They got yeah. the Gillian Wallow adventures. They're always putting out. Vlad is always putting nah, out content. Gillian Wallow killing it. Also, Tra- Trap Lord Ross it. got documentaries. There's there's so many people you can put on this list. Even though I feel like the icons, like the big boys and the Angies and the Sway, shouldn't be on there just because they're iconic and they should be doing something else. Even they got daily platforms. Like we should have another list for them that puts them in their proper perspective of the Mount Rushmore's because it just feels strange to me. It's like, it's like right now, if, if you said who the top 10 players in the league and let's just say Braun is at seven. Yeah. And I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying, yeah, you'd be like, that don't look right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even though but, we're talking about right now, that don't look right. Yeah. Like to me, I'm like, if we were doing the top five media personalities in basketball, I don't know if we'd put someone on that list that didn't have a platform to disseminate their media. It's really that simple. The fact that you I did, don't think that's that, a reason, uh, an unreasonable take. But then, would your argument be that he shouldn't be on the list at all? Now, now I, I, I'm trying to think of this from both I, angles. I, I would, I would. Uh, Are there, you know, how like there's some people that like Twitter is their platform. I could put him at 25. Okay, because Twitter trolling should not be enough. And by the way, me and Elliot had this conversation last year because one thing that people forget. Mm. He went on DJ Academics podcast last year because once again he don't have his own platform right. that he can utilize. Right. So he went on DJ Academics platform. Play what he said on Academics platform last year, Taylor. This was last last August. This was last August. What up, Chick Smooth? No I'm getting this from right? Chick Smooth YouTube. So whatever page. you say, you know Chick gonna have, have everything up there. Whatever you say, Chick's gonna be on YouTube with it, man. Charlemagne is remaining loyal to his network, the Black Effect Network. So if you're not with them, you're against them at this point. Who after said that? DJ Academics called out Charlemagne for pretty much doing an interview nah, with cheap. Loon, after he's been asking him for an interview for the last two huh. years, looks like someone else has beef with Charlemagne for not doing an interview with him. That would be Elliot Wilson. Yes, the same Elliot Wilson that got mad and sensitive that Drake did not do an interview with his platform, but went and did an interview with somebody else that's not in the culture. Elliot Wilson was on mm. DJ Academics podcast of the records. Make sure you guys go check it out on Spotify, where he made it clear that he's not rocking with Charlemagne right now. And not only that, but apparently they were never cool. Here's what Elliot Wilson said. I'm not feeling Charlemagne right now, though, too. Really? Oh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't like how you move sometimes, honestly. Wait, like personally or? Hmm? I thought you were cool. Nah, we're, been cool up there. we're cool, we're cool. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 hold on. Now, let me, let me get the, I, I mean, listen, I, uh, um, <laughs> I, I wasn't feeling. I, think that I, he I, does, I don't think some type of OG moves he doesn't do right to me. I feel like he's like really much about his 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 people's his network and how he's moving now. And I think there's a change. You you sparked that and said that, and I think that that's true. No, to no, that. Of course, I think that's the. That, I think that's always been true with Charlemagne. Though. I, I feel no, like but he's got more empowered, and the lines have kind of been drawn more about who is on his side and who's not. 
Yeah, if you're not black and fake, like you're like out the bus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, but but what's your his really? Can I? His can you pause for a second? Pardon me for promoting my company. No, no, no. <laughs> this is an this is an actually interesting thing. Talk to me because I know where that energy comes from. Talk to me. They see you promoting certain people, doing certain positive part of your network. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming, again, I'm not exactly sure how they... So it all makes sense now. I bet. So this is rooted in past comments. Got it. Okay. I didn't know Elliot went on, uh, went on off the record with academics and threw Charlemagne under the bus and said, we not seeing eye to eye. We ain't. I didn't know about that. Didn't know about that. Yeah, Elliot, you kind of, you kind of started it. Right. Because whatever y'all had going on, whatever dynamic y'all had behind the scenes, if y'all wasn't really clicking like that, you tried to get an interview on the show, Brilliant Idiots or Breakfast Club or whatever. I thought you and beat I had been on Breakfast Club. But if you came out and made the behind the scenes issue public. And you wonder why he comes out and besmirches your name on a public platform now that you're on this list. I think at that point you became the op. Soon as you said his name and you said something negative or you said y'all wasn't rocking and then you tried to clean it up like, oh, no, nah, we good. Because you had kind of uh, <laughs> you gave us a glimpse into the into the fourth wall. Yeah, you kind of played yourself a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You showed your hand. And the thing about showing your hand is now once it's revealed, you cannot control how your competitor or your opposition responds. Right. Because somebody could see that you showed your hand and they could say, you know what? They, they think I'm going to react right now, and I can, or I could act like I ain't see it, or I could act like it don't matter to me. But now we see, to Charlemagne, it absolutely does matter. Now, also, I think what was going on behind the scenes, and I saw um, Charlemagne come out and mention this in another piece, because he came back and, and threw ether at him again. He basically said that, I think Rap Radar was looking for a home because the platform that they were working with, uh, Interval, went out of business. Uh, Elliot and and uh, B Dot wanted to take it over to the Black Effect Network, excuse me, which is the network in which Charlemagne owns. Right? Charlemagne says we didn't want it. Okay. Now I don't know if Charlemagne didn't want it. Because there's also another side to the story. Maybe they couldn't afford it, right? Because everybody's not going to come to the Black Effect and not get no upfront money, not take no real offer. I'm not just bringing my shit to the Black Effect just to put your motherfucking stamp on my shit when I'm creating everything. I got the team together to shoot it. I got my audio folks. I got my own studio or whomever we're using for the studio is coming on behalf of me. I've already, this show has already been running Right. We've been producing it, this, that and the third. I'm not going to bring it to your network where you don't have to do anything at all. Right. And we bring my IP to your network and I don't get anything in exchange for that network other than you posting it in your podcast RSS feed or some bullshit like that. What the fuck, nigga? I don't need that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the black effect, you know, if you're in the network with me, I can I could take you over here, over here, over here. Elliot Wilson doesn't have an interest in my to my knowledge. Of going on TV. Elliot Wilson, to my knowledge, doesn't have a desire to do radio, right? So some of the things that you can offer to some of these younger creators who have a desire to go be hosts, you know what I'm saying, for Essence Fest or hosts for uh, South by Southwest. Not, and that's not even a thing no more, is it? Rolling Loud, perhaps, um, or whatever those situations may be. These are older elder statesmen. You know what I'm saying? One in Elliot Wilson, who's over 50, B Dot, who's in his mid-30s, pushing 40. They don't have the same desires, right? They've done stuff with Tidal and Jay-Z, right? So they've already kind of run that that program a little bit on that side of it. So if you're not gonna talk anything that's more to my liking, which is gonna be money, are you willing to pay upfront costs to add it to the to the network? Are you willing to split production costs? Are you willing to put any skin in on this thing if I'm bringing it over there? If the answer is no, we're not going to do it. I 
I personally, because a negotiation is a two-way conversation. I don't think it's just a, we didn't want it. Because if it was a, we didn't want it, there wouldn't have been a conversation. Personally. So, I think a lot of this shit is just convoluted business dealings that didn't go the right way or didn't go as planned or whatever the case may be. And on the heels of that is some personal issues that spawned from that because you thought this person that you was cool with, this person that you thought that you did have a better relationship with, and this person that you know has access to resources that they could pour into your shit wasn't really trying to do it. Yeah, we're not really rocking like that. And if I'm not over there, I see how you I see how you speak on me, right? I don't know. I'm just assuming, just giving y'all my shit firing off, firing off the hip. Now, as it pertains to more of Charlemagne's comments, I'm going to paraphrase for you because I don't know if y'all want to hear all this shit. You know what I'm saying? But basically, here's some of the some of the thoughts. And big shout out to uh, It's a Vibe, a.k.a. Sound on Twitter. Um, he gave us the, the TLDRs on this. So basically, here are some highlights. He says, Elliot looks like a sore thumb. That's Ben Stiller's dad. So he's saying he looks like Ben Stiller's dad. If you saw the, uh, if you see the thumbnail and you feel like he looks like Ben Stiller pops, hey, go for it. <laughs> he says your name should be Eda Dick Wilson. Wow, that's foul. That's flagrant. That's a bit much, especially for elder statesmen in hip hop. Y'all not setting a good example right now. Furthermore, he states, Rat Radar wanted to come to Black Effect Network. This is what I was just talking about. We didn't want it. All he's done this year is do a bad academics impersonation, right? He reveals that he called him last year and they had a, had an exchange. I guess it was a negative one. He says, if you're going to play this new role, stand on it. Don't pop shit and then apologize. Now, what I will say about Elliot Wilson and his Twitter antics over the course of the past year or so is that it's definitely gotten him into some issues, right? For whatever reason, he wanted to get an interview with Nicki Minaj. I don't know if that conversation ever happened up front Nikki definitely didn't feel like it did right she went on Kai Sinat she was twerking she was having a good time on the show trying to connect with the youth a lot of people looked at it some people loved it some people hated it some people didn't feel like she was um you know acting her age or mature apparently Elliot Wilson was one of those people right he said, this is journalism in 2023 he knocked it he didn't fuck with it and she snapped off on his ass on Queen Radio right Fair game. You you use my name. You want to say something about what I got going on because I didn't come see you. She said, yo, if you wanted an interview, all you had to do was ask. You didn't ask. But now you're mad that I'm going elsewhere. Get the fuck out of here. You think you could pop shit at me because you close with Jay-Z? Fuck y'all niggas. Hey. It is what it is. I don't know what I don't know what the Jay-Z correlation is. It seems that she has some sort of issues with Rock Nation. We've talked about that. Right. Title. Anybody affiliated with that side? She claims that she had moles over there. I don't know. She seems to think there's a conspiracy that's trying to hold her back from that side of it. Whatever, right? So that was one strike. Then another strike came via Drake. You know what I'm saying? He's been kind of mad that Drake's not giving him an interview. So when he went on to the Bobby Altoff show, he said some old shit about that, right? He said that shit was corn. He said that shit was whack. He said, y'all niggas... Keep trying to y'all wonder why y'all not connecting with the hip hop base that you claim you love and want to and want to have people see you under. But then you go and give interviews to outsiders within the culture, right? To people who aren't authentically hip hop, who don't understand the hip hop vantage point, who don't understand the complete, you know, past, present and future of the culture. So he felt some type of way about that. And what it did was it endeared him to a certain hemisphere of people online, the, the trolls, they're like, okay, we see one of our own. But then there's another group of people, and I think I may, I may be included in that other group of people because I know who Elliot Wilson is, who he was. I used to read his columns. I used to read XXL religiously. I used to see the, the show improve niggas, the one, you know what I'm saying? I Nigga, I had a motherfucking Lupe fiasco uh, when he was one of the top, when he was one of the five picks. This is before the freshman cover. Uh, when they did like a, a piece regarding him, I had that shit on my wall in 2006. I was in high school and that was my fucking nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I, I remember double XL very clearly. You know what I mean? And I used to read the source, but he was gone by the time I got into the source. So for me to see him in 2023, 24 trolling artists, um, and trying to kind of, I don't know, uh, tweet guilt them. 
into doing a sit down with them, a lot of people kind of like, ah, eh, that ain't the way to go, bro. You a legend. You you predate all of this. You should be above all of this shit. If artists don't want to sit with you, you do know who will sit with you. Hov's going to give you an interview any, any and every time he has an album coming out, right? That's who you got. Most people will never get a sit down with Jay. Most people in the media space have never had a sit down with Jay. So if you're going to be a legend, you got to accept the good, the bad, the ugly, what does come, what doesn't. It shouldn't be no tr no problem because you've already done everything that everybody is still trying to aspire to do, although you did not do it in the social media era. And for many people in today's time in the social media era, if it can't be tweeted, if it wasn't done via video, if you can't find it on YouTube, then it doesn't exist. But for those of us that grew up in a time where life wasn't like this, we know if you put it in print, if you put it in a book, if you put it in a magazine, this stuff did happen, right? These are the things that raised my era. You know what I'm saying? Being in books, I didn't have a fucking iPad to learn my shit or save my goddamn shit. You know what I mean? I had to go to the library to type up my goddamn book reports and shit at the time. I didn't even have a computer at home for a long time. So there is a life. There is a real world. There is documentation going on outside of just YouTube videos. And for whomever doesn't understand that or wants to use that against you, Elliot, I'm talking to you. Them niggas could kick fucking rocks, bro. You've been here. You've made a living off of your words, your your uh, opinion, your interviewing style, your interviewing prowess that you've had for fucking almost 30 years now. Why would you fall into trolling tactics because then that does put you in this in the same category as a dj academics maybe that's the category you want to be in he says he still wants to compete at a high level he doesn't want to just rest on his laurels of what he's done but i think if you look at sway if you look at angie martinez you look at um you know what i mean like all of these people even charlamagne like charlamagne be be, be trolling too though so let me take him out the list <laughs> right but really Angie Sway, like they've done it all and they ain't out here shaking ass and trying to get down with nobody for that extra attention. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And when they have a great moment, it, 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 it permeates in the culture. I think you should recalibrate the way that you're approaching this. And, you know, you're an OG, but you still don't have because you were not on like an established radio platform with the station that did both audio and visual, you kind of are playing catch up with some of your other peers and they are your peers. So maybe that's where you're coming from, where you feel like you got to, you know, vie for attention. But I think that approach is a little bit played out and nobody really wants to see you in that. You know what I mean? Like, and I think more people would be inclined to come see you if you weren't leaning into the antics so that's my assessment of the situation um i know y'all niggas gonna see this shit <laughs> you got motherfucking Charlemagne out here using chig smooth videos in his in his podcast right y'all niggas gonna see this shit but don't don't shoot the messenger and don't say oh it don't matter because you're not in the list nigga you got less than fourteen thousand subscribers yes i do and that bitch finna go up OK, because I ain't going nowhere. Y'all going to see me. I know this shit front and back. I could out rap these motherfuckers, too. So my face will be coming up regardless. All right. Let me know what y'all think of all this shit down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. It's so much better on the inside than the out. And I will catch y'all on the next one. Much love and respect, y'all. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rags. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Boy, I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm so straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. Yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me. Uh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Uh. Cross somebody came back with some battery, stand for my honor. But you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.